What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video I wanted to talk about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching right now and looking to trade heading into the month of September in 2019. I also wanted to break down the stock market futures this morning on the 28th of August, taking a look at where we could potentially be headed today and maybe for the rest of this week, breaking down some technicals as well as just going over my watch watch list here talking to you guys about just my thoughts on the market and what I'm preparing for in these next couple of days. So if you guys find value in this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me, trading content, stock market content, investing content. This is the channel for you. So guys, let's get right into it right now. The slash ES, the E-mini S&P 500 index futures, they are currently Currently down about four dollars and twenty-five cents, as you guys can see right here. Down about 0.15 percent, with about 40 to 45 minutes left to the market open here. The Nasdaq futures are down 19 points, down a bit more on a percentage basis than the S&P 500, down about 0.25 percent, but nonetheless, not too crazy of a down move here. Just simply, um, you know, treading down a bit this morning. On the two main ones that we track, and the Dow Jones, of course, down 49 points right now, down 0.19%. So as of now, guys, you can kind of see something similar on all of the three indexes that we talk about, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P. Take a look at all of these on the four-hour chart. You can kind of see a similarity here. We're kind of getting rejected under moving average resistances on the four hour chart. Notice how the ES, the E mini S&P 500 futures, they're getting hit under the 50 SMA here. We're noticing how we popped up. Was that yesterday? Yup, we popped up 9 a.m. yesterday, got rejected there, sold off, right? We tried to pop up and now we're starting to sell off again under this, um, you know, 50 SMA. This could be honestly the start of a potential drop to a lower low here on the ES, right, on the S&P 500, and that makes sense because if we're just taking a look at the overall pattern since the beginning of August, ever since we hit that all-time high, we've been making lower highs on the S&P. Notice how the next high was at about 29.40, now this high is at about 28.90, so if we were to dump and especially get down into the low 2800s, and if we go to the actual S&P index, you'll be able to see this in this even better, you know, if we dump and get below 2850 and start to test 2810, which is the next support, we may be getting lower even into the 2700s, which will open up a lot of opportunities and some stocks out there that when the markets fall, right, these stocks, they open up value for maybe long-term investors to hop in and capitalize on that, that potential investment there, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking in this particular uh, point in time. And of course, maybe even some swing trades might open up as the markets can continue if they continue to drop. If we go back to the NASDAQ, again, you're seeing a lot of the similar things that you saw on the S&P. We're getting rejected under that 50 simple moving average. We're looking to maybe go down to 74.50, test that support where we saw a triple bottom a couple of weeks ago. Honestly, the whole entire month of August, we uh, bottomed off there or bottomed out there rather once, twice, three times. That was actually two days ago when we tested that again. And now we popped up. We didn't fully pop and break out and break out of the moving averages, which would have been extremely bullish, but we got rejected. We're getting rejected now and we're slowly starting to turn even more red as we speak. The S&P or rather the NASDAQ right now is actually pushing down even lower from when I started this video it's at, at about minus 0.3 right now. So keep an eye on that 7450 level. That's a critical support. We may be retesting that. If we break that, we may be going down to 7300. So going over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, you can see, again, a lot of the similar stuff. We didn't break out of the moving averages, which would have been very bullish, but we got rejected by those moving averages, which is a bit bearish right now. This could be a lower or high from the previous and honestly this is a downtrending pattern right now um you know over 
overall in the Dow Jones right here. And if we break, I would say about 25,400 to about 25,500. If we break that level of support, do something like that, we may be headed down to 24,000. 700. That's a very critical support level as well. And if we go to the Dow, you can actually see it. Uh, rather, the Dow index that I actually have the lines drawn across, not the futures, but the actual index. You guys can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? 25,500. If we break that, we may be going down to $24,700. So, Overall, guys, that's kind of my thoughts on the markets right now. Moving averages, technicals, they're seeming a bit bearish right now on the major indexes. So just keep an eye on those levels. I would love to know what you guys have to think down below in the comment section on the markets right now. Let me know your thoughts. You all know at this point that I love talking to you guys down below in those comments. So a couple of stocks that I'm watching, and this is one that I actually swing traded from a couple of, I think it was like last week or or something. I haven't really updated you guys on this, but at V, I don't know if you remember, but I took a swing position on at V when it broke above this level of resistance at around $48. I think I got in at about $48.30 or something like that, um, if I'm remembering correctly here. And the whole idea behind this swing trade was to see if at V was going to fill the gap up to $51.50 to about $51.70. And if I drag this chart out, out a bit to a year, you can see that this range has been traded within over the past couple of, uh, honestly, months at this point, we broke $48 to the downside. We held support at around $40. We filled the gap up to $48. And $48 was clearly a resistance for the past couple of months. So I was thinking to myself, okay, every time that AtV, pretty much every time AtV's broken out of $48, it's filled up to $51. Notice how in the past, we broke $48, we filled up to $51.52. We broke $48, we filled up the 52. Here we broke it, we failed, we dumped, ended up testing that same support at around $40, popped up, failed to break out. We actually broke out in the beginning of August um, from $48 up to around $50 to $51, and then we pulled back down, and when we retested that resistance a couple of, uh, last week or the week before, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was last week when I did get into the position, and we started to pop out, I took a little position, I scaled into my position as I do with a lot of my swing trades and you guys can clearly see um, from the performance of AtV on a closer term basis ever since I ended up getting in it fiddled a little bit it did go down I was you know sitting on a bit of a red trade there to be completely honest with you guys but then it ended up popping up filling the gap so you know AtV is looking very very good right now I did end up taking my profits yesterday on this particular stock, but now I'm just thinking about watching it obviously to see if it breaks out of the next resistance which in this point in time is at around $52 and if it breaks $52 let me pull out a bit further again on you guys here um, on the one year one day $52 there's a lot of room up here for at V to fill because if you guys recall at V and a lot of the video game stocks have been getting crushed so this is a good sign that we do want to level up to the next level of resistance and potentially continue to climb up and maybe recover, um, you know, all you know, recover a bit because again, we've been getting crushed on AtV stocks. So, you know, what I'm looking at here, guys, probably is $55, right? We're noticing $55 might be that next level, and that's really just the spot I'm looking at if we do end up holding 51 to 52 as a new support. So, patience is very key here. AtV, watching that one very, very closely. Um, Starbucks has kind of been fiddling with this $95 level, $96 level of support. I want to see a break out into $96, $97-ish, and maybe we could fill the gap up to $99 from there, maybe even hit an all-time high at $100. That's kind of what I'm waiting for right now. With Starbucks, you guys can clearly see the resistance at $96, $50-ish, right? You guys can clearly see that. If we do something like this, we could fill up, maybe get a 3-4% move there on um, Starbucks. 
A couple more that I am watching, Chipotle Mexican Grill. This one, I'm really honestly looking for a pullback on it, maybe a pull-down retest on that 50 SMA. That could open up a nice entry point here on CMG. And honestly, guys, Chipotle's been doing very well recently, despite the markets getting killed over the past couple of weeks. It's pretty impressive the way Chipotle has been able to just continue to crush it here um, you know, over these past couple of weeks. And another one, guys, Altria, ticker symbol M-O. Let me give you a quick history lesson. Altria, they were actually... Uh, combined with Philip Morris International back in 2008. Those two tobacco companies, they were actually together. They were actually one company, and then they ended up splitting off in 2008. Altria is, U is, is a U.S.-based company, right, and Philip Morris International, they obviously handle all of the international um, in terms of what they do with their tobacco and their cigarette brands, right? And now we got news yesterday, rumor... Um, that they might merge together, guys. They might merge back together, which in my opinion would be an awesome, awesome move here. And why am I mentioning this? Because if this merger does end up happening, if we get more news surrounding the merger, Altria stock can go crazy because we saw yesterday how Altria, when this news came out, it popped up all the way to $52. That's about a 9% move in the matter of like 30 minutes here in pre market when we got that news, but then we obviously saw it dumped all the way back down to about $44 per share. But nonetheless, I think it's worth watching, especially with the way it reacted to that initial news. I think there's a lot of potential here. You know, if that news, if they actually merge and there's a premium for Altria shares, you know, this is going to be very, very interesting to see, um, you know, where this could end up going, right? We may be back up to the $50 level, $55 level, even. I saw an article saying there's a premium for Altria shares if they merge at $60. I don't know if that's true. Honestly, guys, there's a bunch of stuff out there, but we haven't gotten a confirmation yet um, from my research from Altria and PMI about any uh, you know premium stuff or anything like that regarding to the merger, but just keep an eye on it. It's very, very important um, you know, just to see if this can be a, a nice move for you, right? This could definitely be a good move. So, um, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Those are just a couple of stocks that I'm watching. Of course, the market ETFs, volatility ETFs. If we do end up getting, um, you know, some volatility in the markets today in the upcoming days, I'm watching those. And of course, tech stocks, maybe Facebook, Apple, um, you know, Amazon for a bounce back play. If the markets do decide to go green today, these are ones that I am watching. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing. If you want to see further content for me, I appreciate all of you guys watching. It means a lot to me. Peace out.